Well, g'day guys, welcome to the channel. Um, yeah, we're back here at the development block and we're spraying um, the other bit that I didn't spray a couple of videos ago. So throughout this video, while I'm in the sprayer, I might even just do a little bit of a um, uh, harvest summary too, just uh, explain a few things, a um, bit of information, um, just to get a bit of context about how the year went and that sort of things. The other thing happening is we've got uh, while we've got a few bodies on deck um, we're running a convoy of all the machinery back to the main farm so we've got both headers we've got the challenger with the coolerman chase bin on it and um, i think we might even be taking a mother bin back um, so that is the story speaking of the mother bin there it is there we've got dad dad's gonna take it back i think it's about 45 50 k's back there so um, yeah, it's it's a decent hike, and um, yeah, you just can't go too quick with this. The triple five doesn't go overly quick, but um, that's probably a good thing because these these mother bins don't like rattling down the road. So um, yeah, it'll be good to get all this gear back. We had it sitting here for a while because we just weren't sure whether the neighbours were going to need a hand with harvest and that. Um, but yeah, it looks like it's all under control. So we're uh, yeah, send it all back there and. I don't think there's anything major major that needs to be done um, with the headers um, which is a nice way to end harvest we did a fair bit of work during harvest but I might talk a bit more about that um, in a little bit I think Josiah's back from his holidays on the rock picker. So that is another job that's happening. Um, I might just squeeze in one more load now today and then over the next two days when the conditions are right I should finish up uh, the spray. Off to unload another load of rock. Well, we've done 224 hectares and uh, because all the little bit extra land, just a little bit here and there, I'm not 100% sure what the total is anymore, but I reckon it'll be around maybe 380 or 3, or yeah, maybe, maybe close to 400 hectares. Um, because yeah, we're not spraying um, some of the country I sprayed last time. So usually I think it's about, yeah, it was about 500 hectares. I think that's it for the day anyway. Um, it's just starting to get a bit warm. Um, it's probably, what, 31, 32 degrees. So uh, just with some of the chemical that I'm spraying, it works a lot better if you keep it under 30 degrees. So uh, we won't, won't do another load. Uh, what I might do before we I head is have a quick look at something that was uh, sent to us to use during harvest, but we never actually needed it. Um, but anyway, we'll have a bit of a look and um, yeah, might maybe one day in the future we can um, do a test with it. Um, I'm sure we'll need to use it at some point, but um, yeah, we'll, we might conjure up a plan to uh, to do a bit of a test with it um, at some point. This kinetic rope here. Um, 
we were expecting to have to use that quite a bit during harvest, but we did not have to, which was a good thing in one sense. Um, but yeah, it was um, going to be interesting to give this a try. So it's a kinetic rope. Um, I think it's about an 80 mil diameter rope. So it does also have the a little protective um, webbing on it. Um, but yes, so there was a company that contacted me before harvest and basically said they didn't want promotion. They just wanted to get some testing um, and which suits me perfectly, suits us perfectly. This here, we've never tried a kinetic rope. We usually just use the flat um, kinetic straps and that is, that's all we've known really. So it's gonna, it will be very interesting when we do get to use one of these. Um, the dozers are getting used a bit more now. So there is a chance that, I mean, let's be honest, there is a very, very likely chance that at some point the do one dozer is gonna get stuck and if it's not stuck too badly, we'll be able to use this and test it out. Um, it is rated at 50 tonnes, um, but the size of it, it wouldn't surprise me if it'll, it'll, if it'll take a fair bit more than that. Um, so the company also sent down a few other things to test out. Um, they usually deal with the four-wheel drive type recovery gears, winches, straps, all of this sort of stuff. Um, so they sent down um, some 40-tonne soft shackles. Now. The soft shackles are something we were very interested in even before I was contacted, um, just for safety, because this here, um, I think we've got a, a D shackle over there, but this soft shackle here, if it's 40 ton, um, that means you can join two straps together without having something like this in between them. Now, with kinetic ropes in particular, um, it will, absolutely catapult one of those things and make a lot of carnage if one strap breaks. So if you've got two straps and one of them breaks, then the other one's at full tension and this D-shackle will go absolutely flying and potentially hit a tractor, hit someone, whatever. So it's something you really want to be careful about. So basically this here replaces that. Um, I'm not going to be able to do this one-handed, but I think you'll get the idea that all it is is a loop at the end that goes through that knot and then you just pop that out um, you do really need two hands, but you pop that out and that's what you end up with. And so you can thread that through a small opening, um, do whatever you want to do and hook that up and it, uh, yeah, they, you theoretically work really well. Now we did actually have to use one, I wasn't there, but um, a neighbour got his um, header stuck and we did have to use one and it performed exceptionally well, so much so that the neighbour wanted to know where he could buy some from. For those that are interested, um, yeah, here's the, here's what it's made of. I don't know all the details, but if you're wondering what the soft shackles are made of, um, that's the specs there. So 16 by 700 millimeter UHW MPE fiber. So that is, yeah, that's going to be absolutely great to test. Um, and at some point we may even do a brake test with this just to um, see what its actual capabilities are. Gonna be very interesting to see how that all goes. Well, it's another morning here at the development block and we did get a bit of a shower go through or I think it was the edge of a storm or something. Um, and we did end up with about two and a half mils of rain, um, which must come down pretty heavy because you can see all the little dimply marks in the road. Um, but uh, anyway, it looks like it's not enough to stop the spraying. You can already see here, there's a bit of a, a, bit of a crack forming, so it's all pretty well dried up. Um, and yeah, you can see on a weed here, there's virtually no moisture on it. Little couple little droplets, but um, you just want to make sure after rain and that, that the weeds or whatever you're targeting isn't just absolutely saturated in water. Um, otherwise, once the chemical hits it, it'll all bead off and, um, and yeah, the plant's not going to absorb that. The forklift here has been abs. This is the first time I think I've actually used it um, other than just a joyride. And it is absolutely beautiful. So um, it's big enough, big enough wheels, enough surface area that you can drive in the paddock a little bit and not worry about getting bogged. It's got a nice amount of grunt and um yeah you just it's it's really really nice starts easy so very very pleased with uh with having this down here now
Well, I'm actually just heading back after the first um, first load, and I thought that I will give a brief summary, um, just an overview basically of how Harvest went. Um, I haven't actually done that in a video yet. There was, I sort of did have a video planned that was going to be um, a full video just on that, but then I thought a full video of looking at my face is probably a bit much for some. Um, so I'll go through just some points. Um, yeah, basically how, how the year went. Now, as far as yields go, um, the standout was probably the canola. Um, that was the first thing we harvested um, and it yielded reasonably well and the price was really good. So that, that performed really well. That would be the standout. Um, now, some of the other stuff, we had a little bit of barley that got flood damaged. So there was a bit of a missed out on a bit with that. Um, and linseed, uh, that was affected a bit too. And then um, yeah, going on with the wheat, a good chunk of the wheat was actually affected by Fusarium head blight. Um, so that, that, low, that it almost halved the yield um, for a good chunk of it. So that, uh, yeah, that was a big, a big uh, hit. Um, and just with the wetter year, it wasn't the flood itself, but just the year being a bit wetter, um, obviously more prone to disease. And the Durham at the development block here was pretty, good it wasn't too bad we were probably hoping for a bit higher yield but again just the wet weather throughout the year like i think we got 200 mils in the month leading up to harvest or something like that and um yeah like that just it just can't cope with it and um that's uh yeah makes affects the yield a bit so yeah it wasn't a great yield but it was still reasonable um the quality was down a bit than what we were hoping for so obviously you lose Maybe it's $100 a ton, um, just from being a bit, um, yeah, the quality not quite being there. So, um, yeah, that plus the yield, you end up, um, yeah, not not where you would, were hoping, I guess. And then finally, the organic stuff um, was, yeah, just average. So, um, it obviously yields a fair bit less. Um, I don't have the exact figures. I think it might have been about two tonnes of a hectare, the organic. Um, and yeah, which is which is okay. Like you, you are getting paid more per tonne. Um, so yeah, we haven't sold any of that yet. It's all in the two big silos here at the development block. So um, yeah, that'll be interesting to see how much we can get for that. But um, yeah, I think all in all, it's probably a year where, yeah, and, and it's funny with farming probably, the goal isn't necessarily to make a lot of money. The goal is to make enough money to do it again. And we're probably in that situation where, um, yeah, the crops were good enough that we probably didn't really go forward or backwards, but we got enough to go again. Just with the input costs, obviously everyone knows that everything's really expensive. Um, so, you know, it costs a lot more to farm and then you get a few natural um, incidents whether it's floods, just more rain, whatever it is, knocking the yield and the quality about, and all of a sudden, um, all the cream has gone out, so to speak. So, um, yeah, that's basically where we're at with the harvest summary. Um, a couple other things is the compressor, that uh, Atlas Copco compressor, um, we've ended up buying that. So, yeah, that's the one we fixed up that had been damaged. Um, the dealer couldn't fix it at that time. He was just short on time and labour. Um, we got it all going and used it throughout harvest. It performed really well. We loved it. Um, so, yeah, we've actually we've purchased that. Um, so that is good. And I thought um, just I'd take a minute to have a quick... I'll just mention a bit about some of the breakdowns we were having. Um, there's a lot of comments about saying, you know, you need to buy a new header, sell both of them or buy a decent one. And, um, yeah, that, that does kind of make sense. But if you look at it as far as productivity, it, uh, it's very difficult to make that decision because we have two headers that are basically the same capacity as what a new header would be. Maybe a maximum of 10% difference. So a new header, brand new header might be 10, perform 10% better. Um, both the headers we've got are reasonably large ones. So let's say we can get 
40 tonnes an hour from each of them fairly comfortably. Um, a new one might do 45. Oh, you just, it's all dependent on conditions, obviously, but it's not it's not going to make a big difference. Now, the saving would be, obviously, in breakdown time, which this year is probably one of the worst times we've actually had days where we've been broken down. Um, but the reality is a new header is probably 1.2 million Australian, something like that. And if we sold both of these headers, we probably wouldn't get half that. And if we sold two headers and then, and then had one, we would basically halve our capacity nearly. Most of the breakdowns were either aftermarket parts that we'd fitted and for whatever reason weren't quite up to the up to scratch or they'd just worn out a bit or something. So there was not really a genuine issue, not, not a major one anyway. The other main issue which led to some other issues was obviously the um, the hydrostat pump and motor on uh, header number one. It, um, yeah, we got that sent away before harvest to get refurbished to make sure it was all good to go because it was just feeling a bit lazy. Um, now the company we sent it to rebuild them up. The pump is the expensive one to rebuild. So it's quite a few thousand dollars to rebuild that. And the motor, well, it wasn't as expensive, but yeah, maybe a couple thousand dollars to rebuild that. And basically we got the motor back and it was, we were under the impression that it was 100% okay. Um, we weren't told anything different. Um, whereas when we contacted them after we'd had this issue, they said, oh yeah, it was, um, it, it did have, it was still within spec but there was some, it just wasn't 100%. And had we known that, we probably, when we first got it back and fitted the motor to the header, and we were like, oh, it still feels a bit sluggish, um, we probably would have just bought a new motor. Because um, we just don't want to have that sort of dramas in the middle of harvest. Yeah, so, and then we bought a new motor, obviously. So, uh, but because of that, obviously, there was a bit of metal in this hydraulic system, and that caused some other issues with um, yeah, when we're broken down one other time with um, a bit of metal stuck in the hydraulic pump, which shut down all the hydraulics. So that was the main breakdown of harvest. Um, and, you know, we actively tried to prevent anything like that from happening, but that's just the way it happens sometimes. Um, the only other issue, really big issue, was the rotor gearbox in header number two, um, when the sight glass cracked and let the oil out and then got hot. Um, so, yeah, that was the only other issue, which you know, a four, I don't know how many dollars the side glasses are, but not much, but it's probably something we will do regularly is replace those. Um, they're easier to see when they're new and that, so we'll probably, yeah, we'll probably start doing that um, just to learn a lesson from that. Um, but yeah, that's just the way it, it goes sometimes. Um, we're very thankful for the harvest we had. Um, we're very thankful that we're able to get it all off and we're thankful that the rain stopped just before harvest and um, and meant that everyone in our area was able to get a good good uh, crack at harvest. So well, that's the rough summary there um, with that. And um, hopefully this year we'll, uh, yeah, we always, we'll have to be optimists and hope that this year's gonna be bigger and better. So, um, and that'll keep us going. Well, that job's done and it is very nice to be able to put this thing uh, in the shed here when we're done. So usually, Previously, it's just sort of lived next to the other shed over there and gets a little bit of shade in the mornings and evenings, but yes, it, uh, it never does machines good to be out in the sun. Um, a good example would be things like this with this cultivator, like these things don't often see a, a shed. Um, that's a new hose there, that's a new one. Where's an old one? Here's an old one. So this sort of thing happens and um, just time and bit of heat and the UV um, gets to them so with all the lines and things as complicated as a sprayer is um, it's just nice not to have them getting affected by the sun so that is good to get that in undercover here and there's still a lot of space here so um, yes over time we're going to be, um, be able to fill this up a bit more but it is pleasant just to have plenty of space for the minute um, so I'm just going to tidy up a little bit of the chemical side of things um, now that I'm done. We'll probably leave this video here for now and uh, as always thanks for watching and we'll catch you in the next one.